Okay, come on. Yeah. Okay, we're live. Uh -huh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Crazy Andra, and I'm here with my newest sister, CJ Boyd. So CJ has spoken with me before we were talking about our book and stuff like that, but I was at work when I was speaking to her and I felt like I kind of neglected her and really didn't get for you to get to know the real CJ. So we're back today and I just wanted to really highlight who she is and what she does. So please welcome <laughs> CJ. Hey CJ. Hi. <laughs> I just, I feel so honored to be here and I, I didn't feel like we neglected at all. So I just feel like this is a bonus round. <laughs> well, I was at work and even though it said out to lunch, everybody just comes in anyway. So, well, so I just felt like, um, you know, we only spoke about the book and I want people to know who you are because I, I see you all the time and you're very inspirational. So I wanted to know a little bit more about what you do. I know that you used to be a cafe owner and, you know, you're a mom of seven and that you had a lot of things going on and then all of a sudden they weren't. And you had to really um, step up and decide what you wanted to do and who CJ was. And I know that's difficult. Just being a mom of seven is got to be, <laughs> got to be crazy difficult. So tell me I about always, that. I always tell everybody once you have, you're past the third one, it's like piece of cake. Everything just kind of falls into, into line. And like, honestly, one is like, you're new. So it's like a new adventure and it's exciting. And then you have the second one. It's kind of like, oh my God, now I have to figure out how to, you know, divide my time. And you really learn how to multitask. And when you have three, that's the most difficult time, I think, is because two play together and you have the one to the side. And it's like, once you get past the third kid and you're on your fourth one it's like everything it's like they all become a team and they're got you know they play off on there and do their own thing so it's it's really being a mom I, I have to say is the best thing I've ever done and I sometimes you know people ask what who are you and I would say I'm just a mom and then I kind of like landed and people call me out and they're like just a mom really come on being a mom is the hardest job that there is on the face of the planet and so I really started owning that and just really celebrating the fact that First and foremost, number one, that my body was able to create five little humans. And I have two bonus kids um, that are my stepchildren. So the fact that my body, you know, gave me the ability to create little tiny life and nurture them to bring them into this world. And then trusted me with the ability to, you know, raise them and help them shape them into who they are. I just feel like that's the biggest honor that anyone could ever have. I, I agree with you. 100%. So I'm a, I'm a, a dog mama. Um, I have two stepchildren of my own, but I never had my own kids. And I know that um, it, it's difficult. It, it's very difficult. So I can't even imagine <laughs> five, seven, I can't. So um, I, and you know, it's, it's strange because all I ever wanted to be was a mom, but it just wasn't in my cards, you know? So tell me a little bit more about you know, you closed down the cafe or whatever happened. And then you said, well, you know, what does CJ want to do? So what was that like to decide? Because you, I think you said you were 52 and you said, what do I want to do now? So what yeah. was that like? So I, I had the cafe and the cafe came to me at a time when I had just gotten a divorce and I was like, okay, I need to figure out who I am because now I have to make my own way in the world. I have to support myself. I have to, you know, be something of my own and not rely on somebody else to pay my bills, et cetera. And so the cafe served its purpose as in it, it taught me what I have inside of myself, that I have the ability to create anything that I put my mind to, that I, no matter what obstacle came before me, that I could work through it and figure this out. And I ran the cafe kind of as a one woman show. I have three brothers who are amazing support and they helped me with the electricity and all the things that, you know, I couldn't do myself, but to really like own it, I paid all the bills. I wore all the hats. I did all the things. And it taught me that I was capable. I was capable of doing anything I put my mind to, but pandemic happened at the same time. So it was kind of like the county came in and said, you have to close on this date. You cannot be open. We'll let you know when you can reopen. And I was like, that doesn't work for me because I still have bills coming in. I'm still paying the mortgage <laughs> on this building. I'm still, you got to pay the electricity and the heat and all the stuff. And it's like, I kind of 
I did settle into the woe is me mentality for a little bit. And I was like laying in the corner, balled up in the fetal position going, okay, what am I going to do? And it kind of just like landed. This is your choice. You have a choice. It's up to you. You either choose to be a statistic and say that you're a statistic of pandemic who got closed down and woe is you pity party, or you can choose this to be your pivot moment. And for me, it was like really that was the pivotal moment in my life. It was like, okay, sink or swim, baby. You have to figure out what you're going to do. You have to figure out a way to do this. Nobody's going to swoop in and save you. Nobody's going to save the day. You have to figure it out. So I had been dabbling in the online space and there was a lot of personal development and a lot of inner work. And I had been looking at this company and it was, they said, you know, 80% inner work. And I was like, yeah, that's complete bullshit. There's no way that you can make money doing the inner work. But when I really dove into it, I was listening to the inner work and do these meditations and all these, you know, jumped up on life people while I was cooking and baking and all the things. And I was like, mm, that feels really good when I'm in that. So what I did is I decided to just take the time and dive into that space and continue to do the inner work, inner work and just figure out what was I doing? You know, at the age of 50, I'm like, okay, I get to recreate myself. And I had told all my kids when they went off to college, you get to recreate who you are. Nobody went to school with you. You're going to go off to this college and there's going to be tens of thousands of people who have never met you. You can be absolutely anything you want to be. And it kind of landed. It's like, practice what you preach, mom. You can be anybody wow. that you want. You could do whatever you want. You can recreate yourself. And so there was this, <laughs> honestly, when I dove into the online space, there was this, um, <laughs> called the discovery process and it was like an hour and a half worth of time and it was like all these questions I think there was like 19 questions and some videos here and there and it was like really made me like stop and think it answered you know answered the questions who am I what have I gone through what is it that I want out of my life now what plan do I have in place to get where I want to go and it was kind of like I never in my whole life <clears throat> in 50 years asked myself that question what do you want CJ as a woman, what do you want? It was always about how do I make my husband happy? What do my kids need? What does the school need me to support to be a PTA or the soccer mom or whatever the thing? I had never really sat with me and taken the time to just really get deep about what I wanted out of my life. And it was really difficult at first. I, I couldn't even answer it. And I was sitting there in tears, like total tears going, I have no clue what I want. I'm no, 50 years really old. And I have no clue what I want out of my life. And it kind of just made me, you know, it's kind of like smack me in the face and be like, okay, you have no clue, but you get to make a decision. You get to decide who you want to be from here on out. And so that's how the personal development journey started for me. And so like, kind of like a smack in the face and like, here's your opportunity to practice what you preach, to lead by example. And you cannot expect to lead anybody else in doing anything if you cannot lead your own life and that was for me that was it as I needed to step in and be a leader of my own life you know I did something I think it was seven levels deep mm -hmm. with C <laughs> Dean Graciosa and Tony Robbins and it, it's very similar because they ask you what you want you know and then you answer it and, and they keep going so and what will that do for you and what will that do for you so you go really really deep and I couldn't answer a lot of those questions myself and it was a real wake-up call so I, I I do remember what that feeling was like yeah um e even just moving like away like deciding that I want to move more away from nursing and doing nutrition everybody thought I was out of my mind why now you know yeah um so I, I get that so I, I see you doing personal development. What is that like for you to guide somebody else through that? Because that's not easy either. You know, some people are stuck in that mentality. And even though they say they want personal development, they don't know how to take those steps. And some people think it's too much work. So yeah. how do you approach that? Well, I really just like make people like get honest with themselves you know, and I call, and I am the queen of owning your shit. And if you've ever watched any of my lives, I call people out. I'm like, that's bullshit. That's not true. You're saying something about yourself. You say you don't have what it takes. You say you don't know that complete bullshit. You do know, you just need to be willing to own it. And most people are not willing to do that because they're used to 
playing in the background. And I used to call it, I used to like to be the wallflower. Everything's going on, life's going on around me. And I'm like sucked back into the scenery and just watching it unfold. And a lot of people are like that. People, number one, people, a lot of people don't know what they want because they've always been a label. They've always just taken in what everybody else said that they should be and jumped through hoops to meet the expectations of other people. And I really just make people sit with what, what, what is it about you? What limiting belief that you have about yourself? And then I make them write it down. And I'm like, okay, where did that come from? Did you make that up on your own? Were you told that as a kid? Did your grandparents or your parents or your teachers or your pastor or somebody that came from somewhere? Because we don't just know things as children. We learn them. We don't yeah. know hate. We don't know love. We learn that as children. And so for people to really hone in and dig deep and figure out why do I feel that limiting belief about myself and where did it come from and to then to really go okay that's not true for me that's something that my mom taught me or something that my dad said or you know something that my grandparents told my mom and then my mom passed it on to me it's like we are a product of our environment because you know for a lot of parents there's no handbook there's no manual and our parents teach us they teach us what they know because that's what they've learned and it comes to a point where you kind of got to break the cycle that's yeah you, you say no no more uh, this is it, the buck stops here i'm not going to be a victim of my circumstance i'm going to choose something different and i'm think for a lot of people it's like really just making them stop and think that where did those limits come from why do you believe them about yourself what has happened in your life that proves those wrong, you know, proves those right, that you can change them at any point in time. And so I literally have people write them out. And then we do a burning ceremony where they literally start that piece of paper where they throw everything down and they burn it and they let it go off into others. And then we do journaling and gratitude to really hone in what it is they truly believe about themselves. So they're flipping all those limiting beliefs into the things that they know that they want in their lives or that they now can decide that are true for them. And we really just anchor those things in. I know it's not an easy process because um, even in the weight loss, I have people that just have failed so many times that they just don't believe that they're, but they just don't believe that they're capable. So I try to remind them of, you know, what, what, did you succeed in in your life and how did you do that so you you are capable of succeeding so and a lot I know that it does affect a lot of people even like for myself you know I had limiting beliefs like showing up online you know because all all the people that were out were these god they've been out there for years and yeah, right. who's gonna want to <laughs> listen to me I'm not Tony Robbins and and I, I'm so used to being behind the scenes in what I do. You know, we don't look for recognition in healthcare. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that camera girl. So I, it was, it kept me stuck for a while because I didn't like doing lives. And one day I just said, well, why not? You know? Yeah. But it took me a long time to get there. Got <laughs> you know. And and sometimes I think you know it. For me, it takes. I think it takes people to have somebody believe in them. And I always tell anybody that I coach, I believe in you until you believe in you. And yes. I will stick with you till you believe in you. And I think that's what sets me apart is that I'm not just saying, oh, here, here's a cookie cutter. Step one, step two, step three, do this. We're, we're not all the same. Everybody has their own issues and their own way of doing things. And we have to meet people where they are, not where we want them to be, where Absolutely. they are um, and start where they're at. And their goals is their goals. I'm here to guide them into getting their goals, but their goal is not my goal necessarily. And I think a lot of coaches miss the bar on that. A lot of coaches and mentors want to groom this person to, you know, copy, paste, do this step, 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 and become this. It's not about that. You are here to serve. I'm here to serve the person where they're at to help them level up on their own journey, not my journey, not what I want for them. I love that. I love that. I said that in a live with someone that, that uh, from Mental Margarita, that you have to meet people where they're at. It's it's not about you. You know, um, what I think their personal journey is, it, it's theirs. It's for them to make that decision. And that's what I kind of get a little annoyed when I see like, um, 
standardized diets or because those aren't tailored to the people. They're taking something that's very generic and trying to slap everybody's name on it. And I know it doesn't work. And it's the same in any kind of coaching. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But I did want to touch with you on mindset a little bit because, you know, you do empower people and, you know, it is a, similar to mindset, not necessarily the same. And because there's a lot of people out there too that tell people change your mindset, change your life. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in that. But you can't go home and just say, send a check in the mail and then it shows up the next day. You can't, yeah. you know, and there is a spiritual sense in it, which a lot of people don't understand, you know. Um, but I do believe there's an infinite intelligence that God is part of us and that we're not just speaking to the universe, that <laughs> we are speaking to him and that we were brought here to have good lives. And, and the yeah. answers really all live in us, but you have to be willing to accept that. And a lot of people don't believe that they have power or control over what happens in their life. So you know, they say, oh, that's a bunch of hooey, that mindset and that empowerment nonsense, because they don't believe in themselves. So they're not having that luck because they're saying, I'd like this. And then, oh, I could never do that. So they're, they're saying, OK, this is what I want. And I trust you, but taking that trust back. So yeah. can you speak on that? What your what your thoughts are on that? I think a lot of people and I'm just going to come at this and I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I think a lot of people believe in, you know, source God as giving people their miracles and providing people with answers to prayers. And what I want people to understand how I look at it, I'm, I'm a faith-based person and spirituality, but I believe that we're all created with that creator in ourselves. Yes. And we're all made on purpose, exactly as we're made for a purpose with a purpose that we have to figure out what's in there. And, you know, like you said, it can't be a cookie cutter, you know, follow this step and get to here. It's all about taking back that power. We've all been groomed as children that the teach, you know, parents are the number one person. You look up to them, you respect to them. Then you go to school and it's the teachers and, you know, the educators that you look up to. And then you go to college and, you know, the police, you know, it's all these people that are in authority situations that we're groomed as children to look up to that they have all the answers. We're not taught to look within ourselves. We're not taught that we have the power. We're not taught that we have the faith and belief in ourselves. We're taught to look for some validation outside of ourselves. Yes, and what, I say that all the time. What I try to help people understand is that it's in you. You just have to crack yourself open and dig deep to find that power that's within you and that belief and that faith. It's not that you're saying you don't believe in something it's not saying you don't believe in God or source or whatever. It's you believe in that enough to know that it's within inside of you. Yes. He, we're created in his image. So he, he doesn't make, he doesn't make jokes. No mistakes. Nope. <laughs> no, no mistake. So what I want to say, like if someone, what would your perfect client look like? What kind of people come to see CJ? Well, it's evolved. When I first started, my ideal client was somebody who was like down and out and needed a change in life and wanted to have their own money and wanted to be able to be financially independent and do their deal and be their own person. And as I've evolved and my brand has grown, my ideal person is not that person because I don't want people who don't have money. I want people who are at the point like 30 somethings who are at the point where they're like, okay, I'm a mom and I have a career and I do all the school things and I'm here, there and everywhere, but I want to take back me. I want to realize who the woman is, not the mom, not the wife, not the school chauffeur, the person, the mom, the woman, that is the person who's looking to pivot and realize I have worth that doesn't come from any of those things I'm not valuable as a woman because I'm a mom I'm not valuable in society because I'm a wife I want women to understand that they want to choose to take back their own power and know their worth just because they're here that's it and then those women are women who are ready to step in and invest not only money in themselves but time to, to literally take the time and sit and think okay I've done all these things I have a family, I have children, I have a career perhaps, 
maybe that's not working for me. Maybe that's just status quo things that I decided that, you know, I'm just going to go along for the ride because that's what I told I should do. And I've jumped through the hoops and I've met those expectations, but now they're at a point in their life where they're like, I can have it all. I don't have to sacrifice. I don't have to just be a mom and a wife and not have a career. I don't have to, you know, not be a mom to my children and bust my ass to have a career. You can have it all. You just need to be able to prioritize and make yourself the priority because when you're doing for yourself and you're serving yourself, you are able to serve everybody else along the way. And those relationships and those job titles or duties or whatever you want to call them will be enriched because you're working on who you are. And then I think the second ideal client for me is women in their 50s. 50s and new 30. Everybody's like, oh, you're happy. Life is over. I'm like, that's complete bull. 50 is an age on a, you know, on a calendar, just like weight is a number on a scale. That does not define you. Your age does not define you. And it's 50 sums who are, you know, becoming empty nesters. And they're like, okay, I've given my whole entire life to make somebody else happy and reach everybody else's goals. Now it's my time. What is it that I want to create? What is it that I want to accomplish? You know, I'm helping people build their brand and build businesses and really monetize the online space because it's them showing up for themselves, knowing that they have a purpose that's bigger than them and having the purpose to serve other people. And in doing so, they're leading their life and becoming something that they never knew they were capable of, even though half of their life is over. Maybe not. People wouldn't pass a hundred. Well, I'm just saying the normal, you know, what people this say. Age, yeah, no, I, I, I think 150. <laughs> I think that's great. You know, um, this this is my second marriage. So I married my high school sweetheart, and when that ended, uh, I had to ask myself. You know, um, I had always been with someone. What it was like to be alone, and I spent that year by myself just trying to reconnect with me. And I really had no idea who I was because I, my identity was locked into being a sister, you know, being a wife, being this. So, it, you know, and you can lose yourself again because yep. then I was in another marriage and I started losing myself again. And I, and I stopped doing as much for me. And I, I, I really agree with you 100% that, all of your relationships are better when you're taking care of you because you're projecting you. We spoke another time about reflections. The people that are around you are reflections of you. So if what's around you isn't good. You have to look at that. Yeah. You know, you do. And sometimes it's a very hard lesson to learn. You know, absolutely. I, I don't think anybody wants to necessarily go seven levels deep sometimes but (laughs) yeah you really have to do you know and you only have to do it one time but you do have to know what makes you happy because you can't have everything you want if you don't know what it is you want want. exactly and I think for a lot of people you know a lot of times women go into relationships wanting that person to save them wanting that person to complete them wanting that person to make them happy that's not going to happen. You have to figure out how to make yourself happy, how to love yourself, how to take care of yourself before you can do that for anybody else. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the one thing that, you know, a lot of times people get married, they get divorced, they get into another marriage. They don't take the time to stop and figure out who they are. And they get into another marriage and then they're like, I can't figure out why this is just like it was. Because you're the same. You haven't changed. So you can't expect to attract something different to you as far as a lover, a partner, if you haven't changed. And if you don't know what you want, you're just getting whatever's out there. I didn't make good choices in men when I was young. (laughs) You know, um, I I looked for those dysfunctional people because that's how I projected myself. That's how I felt. So and I know that now. I didn't know that then. I could have saved myself a lot of time. <laughs> what it could have, should have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I, where can people find you? I know you're on Facebook because I see I you. Am. I know you're on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I have a LinkedIn. I have um, Twitter. I'm going to go on YouTube eventually. But right now, my main focus is Facebook. That's where I have a lot of my clients come from. 
Okay, so I do have your links and I am going to put them underneath this. So I, I stabbed them from the last time. I yeah. um, Is there anything that, they, if you could say anything to women that are listening right now, well, men too, because men have to realize, you know, um, men are partners and brothers and husbands and, and they need to understand that we are our own, we have our own identity as well as being part of relationships or with them. So what would you say to people that are listening today, if you could say anything? I'd say for women, number one, choose yourself. Choose to value yourself and honor yourself enough to ask the really hard questions. Never stay stuck in a situation because you think you don't want to hurt someone else. You don't want to become a statistic. You don't want to whatever you know, the fallout will be, if you're unhappy, you have to figure that out within yourself. I'm not saying leave a relationship or marriage or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not promoting, you know, proponent of that. But what I am saying is that you cannot expect someone else to make you happy. You need to choose you. You need to own yourself and find value enough in yourself to take that time to just pull back and just really sit Get out of your head and connect with your heart and just really sit with who am I? What am I here for? What do I really want out of my life? What am I willing to change in order to get that? That's what I would say for women. For men, I would say if you really truly love the person that you're with and your partner, support them in their growth process. Don't put a thumb on them. Don't want them to be what you want them to be. Don't take advantage of the fact that they want to make you happy and meet your needs. The best way that you can love your woman is to honor her growth and be okay Are you listening to growing. this, honey? My husband's in the background <laughs> rolling his eyes. <laughs> oh, come on, cameraman. I'm talking directly to you. <laughs> put his hood up and you are. <laughs> I think just, you know, being in support, you know, if you really, truly, honestly love someone, you're going to support their growth. You're not going to want them to stay stuck and unhappy and miserable because then what's the point? Yeah, well, because they're not growing with you too, you know, um, unfortunately, a lot of people get married and they do grow apart because their interests change, uh, you know, um, my husband and I, we, we don't have a lot of common interests, but we do believe in being our own persons. And that that's what worked for us all this time. I mean, we've been together a long time. So uh, if I had someone who told me you couldn't do this or you couldn't do that, it would have never worked, you know, right. um, and vice versa. I don't tell him how to live his life. I mean, right. And I think that's the beauty of it is because you respect one another enough to say you are your own person. You get to do you and have the interests that interest you and light you up and make you happy. And I get to be the same thing, but you have each other and you have that love. That's what keeps you, you know, grounded. Your love is what keeps you grounded together and makes it work because you allow each other to have your own identity. Right. You don't expect it to be, oh, we're a union. We're married. We're attached at the hip. We're like flies on shit. No, you're, you get to be your own deal. And that's what yeah. makes marriages work. I agree. I always love these talks with you. I think I'm going to get into one of your groups and get awesome. empowered. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I will it. say, I, I have, uh, being that I've been through divorce too, um, I've been through two divorces and doing the inner work, I actually came back to my second marriage. We were married 21 years. I got divorced, got apart. I started doing the inner work. He started doing the inner work. We came back together and now we're remarried almost for three years now. And so I've created a course that's called Rekindle the Romance with Life by Starting a Love Affair with Yourself. And I think that that's just a potent container for people to learn tips and tools to start loving themselves because a lot of times relationships go awry because we stop loving who we are. Yeah. Well, we take blame, you know, um, we take blame when something ends badly or something, and it doesn't It doesn't necessarily have to be. I mean, I know people that were married a really long time, CJ, and they just they just grew, literally grew apart. So yeah. you don't take blame for that. Some people want different things out of life, and you can't let fear keep you in a situation that doesn't work yeah. for you or keeps you stuck. You, you have to 
move past your fear, even if it doesn't feel good. And a lot of times it yeah. doesn't. It, a lot of times it feels really bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that really well. But <laughs> when, once you're to the other side, I mean, in the book, like everybody that was there had all gone through something, you know, and came out the other side. And when you're in it, it doesn't feel like you'll ever get out. But when you do, you're like, oh, I could breathe again. So exactly. I get it. And the beauty of it is, is that people reading our stories, people who think, oh my God, I'm never going to make it through this. It's just that tiny little hope, that little seed that's being planted, like, oh, she can do it. So can I. And it's just like being the inspiration for people to understand there's more, there's more to you than you ever even imagined. We are just scratching the surface of who we are as women. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know I could write. Someone told me today. <laughs> wow, you're really good at this writing stuff. I said, well, thank you. Yes, your chapter is awesome. <laughs> so that was nice to hear. That your was nice to hear because to I loved everybody. Well, all right. Well, I'm going to close this out because I don't want them to hear our girl chatter. And um, <laughs> just hang out for a minute, okay? Okay. Guys, thanks. Um, this was CJ, and I hope you love her as much as I do. Chat soon. <laughs>